picture this, you're sustainably losing weight and then all of a sudden, last month you lost three pounds and now you're losing nothing. You're not losing weight, you're getting more frustrated and you are in what we call a plateau. I'm Val, I'm a registered dietitian and I've helped thousands of people lose weight, keep it off and help maintain a healthy, stabilized metabolism and I wanna give you the trade secrets of what really works and what is happening in our body. So what actually is a weight loss plateau? For a lot of people, it means that they're still doing all the things. They're still eating in a caloric deficit. They're still moving consistently and they are just not losing weight. This is actually super common and it happens to almost every single person in their weight loss journey. And I wanna teach you how we can get out of this, how we can continue going. Things that are not a plateau in my opinion are if you go on a vacation or if you stop doing those things that really help you lose weight. A plateau is when you're doing all of the things and nothing seems to be working. And I see you and I know how frustrating frustrating that is, I've been there before and I want to help you get out of it. If you're on your weight loss journey, click the link below to sign up for our incredible newsletter that gives you tips on how to lose weight sustainably and keep it off. Is this where I can, can I really nerd out on the science on this? So I want to get super nerdy with you today. I want to take you on with the science of metabolism because I think if you understand what's happening in your body, it empowers us and reduces down the frustration. Our metabolism is super complex and there's hormones, but the basics of our metabolism is four components. The first one, which is the majority of our metabolism is actually what it's called our BMR or our basal metabolic rate. And most people don't think about our basal metabolic rate all that much. It's the energy that's used to like keep us alive. Like all those essential things. Make sure our heart keeps pumping, our kidneys keep filtering, our liver doing its thing. It literally keeps us alive and keeping our brain functioning as well. And most people don't really think that much about our basal metabolic rate, but it's the energy that's required for us to stay alive. So if you were lying in bed all day long, not moving, not eating, not doing anything, how much energy it would be to keep you alive. And that's 60 to 70% of all your energy in a day. Making sure that the things that really need to happen to keep you alive are happening. That is super energy demanding. Then what comes next is what's called meat or non-exercise activity thermogenesis. This is like me talking to you with my hands, fidgeting, taking the stairs rather than taking the elevator. It's all the random movements that create energy in our day that are not specific exercise. So just pacing around the office, those add up to being a big component of our metabolism. And those are things that when you're in a plateau, I like to double down on as well. The third component is the thermic effect of food. Have you ever heard the saying that you burn more calories eating celery than celery has itself? That's kind of the gist of it. When we eat food, our body has to break it down, metabolize and digest it. And that actually takes energy from turning food into energy in our body. So that actually is a huge component of our metabolism too. And then the sliver on top, which is called EAT, which I think is ironic, exercise activity thermogenesis is exercise. And what I think is so interesting is even in elite athletes, that caps out to 30%. Because if you're an elite athlete, your body needs to recover and heal, but for the average person, only 10% of your whole body's total daily energy expenditure, or your TDEE, is exercise. So we wanna be focusing on nutrition, food, hormones, because exercise is that teeny, teeny sliver on the top, and it's helpful for weight maintenance, but not the most important as it relates to pushing through a plateau or for weight loss. So now that we covered the nerdiness of how metabolisms work, I wanna teach you why you actually get into a plateau and oftentimes why yo-yo diets really set you up for failure. If we lose weight too rapidly, we're in too much of a caloric deficit, or if we're not meeting our body's biological needs for protein, we are actually gonna reduce our lean body mass. Lean body mass is our muscle mass, and if anyone has ever lifted weights in the gym, it takes a lot of work and energy to put on muscle mass. It's consistency, it's training, it's all the things. But when we are losing weight too rapidly, or if we're not meeting our protein needs, our muscle mass will decline. And that actually brings our basal metabolic rate down. And because our basal metabolic rate is the primary contributor to our metabolism, that makes it so much harder to lose weight and our body will actually get us into a plateau. The next part also is when we are in a caloric deficit, we oftentimes are eating less food. So the energy required for digestion can go down and I wanna teach you how we can turn that energy back up while also losing weight in today's video. One thing that I think is so fascinating as well is neat, like that fidgeting. The research actually shows subconsciously your fidgeting, your neat will actually decline. You're not gonna think like, oh, I didn't eat enough today. You're just gonna be more tired. So instead of sitting on the couch, which requires more core stability or standing, you're gonna find yourself lying down and it's a subconscious way for your body to go in energy conservation mode because we are biologically programmed to conserve energy. 
In the last 100 years, it's the only time that we've had a surplus of food. My grandmother is 103 years old and she grew up in rural Romania without electricity, without running water, um, and for them to actually get food on their table was very energy demanding. And our body has not adapted at all with having grocery stores and industrialization of food. So our body, we need to help it feel safe in order to lose weight and not be causing these metabolic changes that really contribute to the plateau. So now let's turn on and rev your metabolism and I wanna give you some tips. If you enjoy this content, like and subscribe because I would love to support you on your journey. The first thing I wanna ask you as a self-disclosed no diet dietitian, are you on a diet? The research shows that if you are on a restrictive diet, that is the fastest way for you to get to a plateau and the fastest way for you to feel like you're failing at something and that's where the weight rebound will come into play. Research shows that the fastest predictor for future weight gain so then we know that you're gonna gain weight in the future is if you are on a restrictive diet. It feels like it's working short term, but it causes these metabolic changes that really set you up for future failure. So the first thing I'd like you to ask yourself is, could you eat the way that you're eating right now for at least two years and, and, and all the seasons of the year? For example, if you're keto, could you do that through Christmas? Can you do that through your holidays? Can you enjoy your life and continue this way of eating? Because we absolutely can create ways of eating that support you through all seasons of life and that you can do long-term. If it's not for a lifestyle, it's not gonna work for you anyways. And that makes us feel like we're failing and really reduces our self-confidence and makes us feel worse about our bodies. And also it's not great for our health too. So I wanna take you some, through some tips that will help you get out of the plateau. The first thing is I would love for you to increase your protein to preserve your lean body mass. The second thing is up your fiber, at least 35 grams per day. The third thing is drink more water. Also tea and coffee definitely counts as hydration, but I would recommend staying away from any sort of added sweeteners or sugary sweetened beverages. I'd recommend completely avoiding, if not eliminating alcohol, that is never helpful for metabolism and there are no health benefits for alcohol. Eating an abundance and diversity of vegetables and fruits, really prioritizing, getting good quality and restful sleep, increasing or changing the way you're doing exercising. I highly recommend increasing strength training and also getting in your steps. Don't rely on the scale alone. What we want to be doing is we want to be also focusing on non-scale victories. These are like trying on your favorite pair of jeans, feeling good in your body, celebrating that you can move more easily, that you can potentially squat a little heavier, walk a little faster. Thinking about these non-scale victories, those are really motivational as well because there's so much more than weight and trying to shrink your body. Not all weight loss improves our health, so trying to do this in a way that's sustainable for your body and it makes you feel good inside and out is the way to do it. So let's talk about exercise. Exercise does matter, especially as it relates to keeping the weight off, for, so for weight maintenance. What I always like to incorporate for our heart health, for our overall health, and for our muscle mass and longevity is actually incorporating strength training in. The more muscle mass we have on our body, the faster our metabolism revs and it helps you lose the weight faster and keep it off faster, preventing the next plateau. The other thing I love to include in is low intensity steady state, just adding in movement, adding in walks, getting outside. Oftentimes when people are going for a run or going to a spin class, we can oftentimes see people's hunger being revved up and they'll eat more because of that. I think low intensity steady state is a game changer as it relates to weight loss. So going outside, going for a nice walk, potentially throwing on a weighted vest if you wanna get some strength training at the same time. Time, those are some incredible ways of boosting your exercise. And I always recommend people putting it in their calendar like it's an appointment with themselves. If we can exercise, it's good for our mental health, it's good for our heart health, it's good for our overall general well-being. And oftentimes prioritizing it helps us make feel like we're prioritizing ourselves. And it also helps promote non-scale victories. Maybe it's playing tennis with a friend, maybe it's doing a dance class. Make it fun so you enjoy doing it that you wanna keep on doing it throughout your life. If you're doing no movement or very little movement, what I would encourage you to do is actually start off with the smallest unit of time that you can't say no to. For me, it's like I cannot say no to doing going for an eight minute walk. I can't say no to doing an eight minute workout video. These small, what we call exercise snacks, really add up and are so good for blood sugar management. They're so good for overall health, but start building these habits. Rather than being like, it's an hour or nothing, any movement is cumulative. So if it's eight minutes a day, it adds up over the week. So I would encourage you to find the smallest unit of time that you can say no to and really show up for yourself because that builds your internal confidence and it's you taking care of yourself too. I wanna talk about mindset and motivation as well. Oftentimes when things aren't happening as fast as it is, or we see coworkers and other people in our life doing things and it seems like it's so easy for them, it's easy to feel defeated. 
You are on your own journey and you're doing this for your health and for your body. Taking away the comparison game can be really helpful and having an accountability support person that can help you figure out what works for your body, like working with a registered dietitian can really help with accountability, support, and helping you through this lifestyle change as well. I like to think about it as a growth opportunity. You're not there yet or you're learning and oftentimes the behaviors that we need to stack, it's a, it's a skill deficiency. If you're turning to food for emotional reasons, we need to help you navigate that skill of not doing that. If you're having a hard time drinking water, maybe there's some tips and tricks to make it easier for you to do that. If you're struggling with getting protein in your day, we want to help build that skill and get out of that fixed mindset of, oh, this is failing or it's not good enough and help you say, I can learn new things. I can try new things and I can get to my goals and create this positive mindset. You're doing this for your health. You're doing this for yourself and you're doing this to feel your best in your body. I also want to remind you that plateaus are normal. They happen to every single person. You are not broken. We might need a tweak and change, but you've got this. So to recap, we went through a lot of things. We went through how your metabolism works, how we can increase your metabolism and tips and tricks on how we can get through this metabolic plateau. I'm Val, I'm a registered dietitian. If you would like more support, like, subscribe, and comment on this video below because I would love to be able to support you. And I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.